This week on the podcast, five-day travel week for me, Tommy Dreamer, he's my hero, and David Arquette hooks me up with another sweet, sweet payday. Enjoy the show. This is the Art of Wrestling with professional wrestler Colt Cabana. All right. How you guys doing? Come on in. Sit down and relax. You're about to listen to the Art of Wrestling, a professional wrestling podcast. It's a life podcast. It's a personal journal. It's an entry way into the minds and souls and hearts and lives of the people of all the world of professional wrestling. I am your host. My name is Colt Cabana. I don't know why I said that so weird. I'm a sing-songy kind of guy today. God knows I'm a traveler. Also, you know I'm a traveler. Most importantly, though, I am a professional wrestler, and I am coming to you live from my studio apartment in Chicago, Illinois. Before I go any further, this is a fan-supported and listener-supported podcast, supported by people just like you. We give it to you free of charge every single Thursday. ColdCommanda.com, iTunes, SoundCloud, wherever you get your podcasts from. A couple great ways to support. Rate, review, and subscribe on iTunes. Tell a friend. Tweet it out. Facebook it out. The best way to support, though. ColtMerch.com, DigitalColt.com, t-shirts, buttons, pictures, posters, DVDs, wrestling, road diaries, action figures, my brand new action figure. Hopefully I put it up online before this episode drops. It's all available. ColtMerch.com, DigitalColt.com. All right, let's get into it. Was the Global Wars Tour 2018? It did consist of some of the stars of New Japan Pro Wrestling and some of the stars of Ring of Honor and myself and Ian Riccoboni wrestling professionally. And it started on a Wednesday in Maine, a Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Sunday tour. And let's see how Mark Briscoe has prepared for it. What are you looking forward to on this weekend? It's time of the weekend. It's a week. I'm going to say on this weekend. I don't think even if it was Friday on this weekend, I don't know. (laughs) You left the kids at home? They're all at home spending for themselves. (laughs) Do you take them to school and stuff? I do. I normally, my wife gets one kid on the bus. I take two kids to school and the other one is at home not going to school at all. (laughs) Your kid dropped out of school? Well, no, he's not made it to school yet. Oh, okay. yep. So now, how have you rearranged your plans? The wife's got to get all three of them to school. <laughs> and she's loading up the four, dropping off two at one school, one at another school, and then her and kid number four are going back home to enjoy the morning brunch, perhaps. They don't even have names. Just kid number four, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they have names. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anything else of note? Ah, uh, no, how are you doing? Me? No one really asks me that, do they? No, that's why that's that's why I I thought I'd ask you. Thank you. I'm okay. What's new with you? Uh, I have my 20th high school reunion coming up. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, wow. wow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go dressed in a singlet. I think you'd uh probably be the belle of the ball. I was telling Jay, in my 10-year reunion, I was in the WWE when I showed up. Nobody could have given two fucks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, so I don't know if they're going to care much about uh, independent wrestler and pro wrestling tea salesman. <laughs> Just tell them you're an entrepreneur. Yeah, that'll be my plan. I'll tell them I'm an entrepreneur. You can see me on the billboards. We did Maine, and the next night we did Boston. And then Sunday we did Toronto, and two out of the four shows were at friggin' ice arenas. And had I known, I would have brought my long johns and thick socks as Ian and I were sitting out there doing commentary for, I don't know, three to four hours each, respectively. Cold. Why are we running ice arenas in the middle of winter? That wouldn't have been my first choice. So there was a lot of traveling and a lot of moving around and a lot of wrestlers hanging out. And I didn't film everything, but I will give you a little slice of life of how the locker rooms work, including sitting around and and watching one of my favorite referees, Todd Sinclair, have a bit of a problem in the locker room. I'm trying to learn how to sew my ref shirt. Hey, Todd, anybody? Uh, Before I got to the building here, I went to Target. And I bought a $9 uh, sewing kit that has all kinds of little trinkets in here. And even my favorite part is this pink uh, thimble. Which you use. I watched you use it. I did. And I, I think I had it on the wrong finger. I think I put it on a finger that wasn't even close to the needle. I Because I helped you a little bit. And I poked myself a little bit. So that's... It was the one going through. You should put it on your uh, index finger. Yeah, and I offered you the thimble, and you turned me down. So I 
I mean, it's kind of your own fault. Well, I have a so I have a sewer's finger. It's it's calloused oh, to the points, like a guitarist or something. Okay, good. So your re- Ring of Honor ref shirt has been through so much that last night did it pop officially or? Well, uh, down to the bottom, the I don't know what you call it, but you know, the, there's the seam, the seam maybe down the bottom that goes all the way around. Maybe six months ago, the string started coming out, and I just let it go. So every time I would ref, a little more of the string would would come out of this ref shirt, and then it eventually got to the side. So as of last night, I mean, I've been noticing it for a while, but last night it seemed to be getting really high. I'm like, okay, it's time to sew this shirt. People weren't calling you out for it? No, no. Thankfully, it was hidden in the uh, in the tuck of my pants. So it was just something that was a confidence thing for me. Well, I'm, I hope you feel confident tonight. I, I hope so too. I'll probably uh, it'll probably rip off like a, a Hulk Hogan style shirt, and well, then we had a friend help at the very end, didn't we? We did. Uh, we so Cabana came over to help me because I'm not a sewer. This is the first time I've actually ever sewed, and I think it was doing okay. But Cabana knows what he's doing, and then he had a theory where instead of tying the the string, he would use fire to seal this in some way. I didn't, I didn't believe it. I feel much like uh, we do with our boots sometime. Have you ever done that uh, with a shoe, with a shoestring? No, nah, I've never done, I don't do anything. I usually just buy something new and some reason I don't buy a new shirt, but no, I've never heard of this. I looked around, I said, who would have a lighter? And, and who came to the rescue? But uh, Jay Briscoe, the good old Jay Briscoe had a lighter on him. So he came over. I watched in, uh, in amazement because you set the string on fire and it went, like the uh, what was it Mission Impossible? Like the uh, the you know the the wick or the I don't know what you call it, but it it went all the way to the shirt, and I'm afraid my shirt now is going to go up in flames like flash paper, but it stopped at the shirt and left a seal, and remarkable. I, I I'm stunned. In my 44 years, I had no idea this works. This is wrestling DIY hacks with Jay Briscoe, Cole Cabana, and Todd Sinclair. I was worried that the shirt was going to go up in flames as we watched the fire go down to the very seam of it all. Uh, luckily, it didn't. And then I saved a man's ref shirt. So if you watch Todd Sinclair with a nice tucked in ref shirt, it was because of me. I saved the day. I'd like to think so. The first half of this podcast is all going to be about the ROH and the Ring of Honor tours. And we had a lot of time driving around, a lot of time on the road and in the car I don't know if I thought about it or something came up, but the story of wrestling enhancement wrestler Scott Colton in the 1980s and maybe even early 90s came up. And somehow and somewhere, I forgot when, it was figured out that this guy was also the wrestler known as the Macho Warrior Rick Hogan. So then I googled Macho Warrior Rick Hogan, and that's not hard. So then I found out his name was Randy Mule. And then I took the next step, and I was just like, I could just find this guy on Facebook. And I'm in a car doing absolutely nothing. We're just driving from town to town. So I was like, all right, I'm going to shoot him a message and see if he knows who I am. And some context for this, when I was a child... And I saw a wrestler named Scott Colton on the television. That's, I mean, it's not an uncommon name, but it's not the most common name. It's not like Rick Smith or Bob Jackson. It blew my friggin' mind. It was one of the weirdest. Imagine you're me, a kid who watches wrestling religiously any way he can, and then he sees like that name on the television. It's been something that's been on my mind my whole life. And now, out of laziness, and then like asking the car, like, hey, I should just Facebook this guy. And they're all like, yeah, definitely. Well, first we were like, we should do a whole documentary on it. And then I was like, well, I just want to find out now. So I messaged him. He messaged right back, knew exactly who I was. And I was like, where did you get that name from? Why were you that name? I don't get it. Tell me everything. And he was just like, oh, some promoter named it to me and it just stuck. And then I was like, who's the promoter? I got to know. And he's just like, oh, he's dead now. And uh, that's where it ended. So I tried to do some Columbo work. Didn't work out well. And then uh, we just went to the next show. And on one of those shows, I saw Trent, my friend Trent with a question mark. And I was like, oh, he's probably got something fun to talk about. And he didn't. But I filmed him anyways. We're talking about this week and touring. Any good stories from this week? No. My original idea for How how's the decision on this beard? Well, I just didn't shave out of laziness. And like, why do I have the beard? You mean? Yeah. How was the decision on it? Yeah. There's a decision to become a beard guy. Yeah, I guess there was. I guess there is. I mean, you got some stubble at all times now, right? Yeah, I made a decision in my life that I'm a man with a beard. I, I haven't shaved with an actual razor in uh, maybe years. Like, to the bone, you know what I mean? 
I don't know. Is this good content? <laughs> Awful. I mean, I'll edit it up. I'll edit it up. And then you live in Buffalo? Rochester. And we were in Buffalo? We were in Buffalo. So it was an hour drive for me. What about here? Three hours. Scary, though, with no phone servers to make it to a show. You drove by yourself? Mm-hmm. Brave, huh? Thought I was at the wrong building. This is bad content. Know, huh? I'm trying to think what I can pluck out of you. I got like, uh, you know, when you get a cold. You know when you, you don't know this, but like when you play video games for eight hours straight, and then you go out into the real world after that, and you feel like it feels like not real life, and you got like brain fog. That's what I got right now. How was Japan? You just came back from Japan, then came right here to these shows. I had like three or four days off, three or four whole days, maybe three whole days off. Yeah, and I'm here. We go back. In four days? Three days? Thursday? How do I pluck some something out of you? Like some actual good content? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> we'll talk about pissing and shitting or something. Is that where the money's at? Yeah, it could be. What's, uh, it might just be the microphone set up, how you're sticking it in a man's face like that. <laughs> it's all right. What's, the, what's, what's something weird that uh, your tag team partner, Chuck Taylor, did on tour this week? Because I saw a tweet, or maybe it was a real life statement, about how you uh, oh you go grocery shopping every day yeah I go grocery shopping every day I don't think it's weird though because I have nothing to do at all when I'm home so like I go to the gym whatever I'm gonna eat that night or right after my workout I buy and then I cook it or just eat it there so not did you there. Dis- what did you discover about Chuck Taylor this tour anything weird about him just grumpy overall mean a mean man that's also sad. <laughs> that's not true. That's true. I I told him that I do the same thing. I'll go three or four times a week if I'm home five days a week or whatever. Yeah. So I don't think it's weird. Everyone in the van then said, like, yeah, I go about every day. Well, okay, so I'm the weird one who owns a refrigerator. Yeah, but he doesn't eat food. Dustin does not eat food. Tell him. (laughs) Sometimes he'll forget to eat food. I don't get hungry. Like, I don't know what that feeling feels like. We went to in and out after, like, a long day. I think you didn't eat that whole day. He got a regular cheeseburger, like not a double cheeseburger. He got a cheeseburger. Just a one patty. Just a yeah. You ever see that? A, an adult I, male? Not. A, I was gonna say a two-year-old. Yeah. He got a regular cheeseburger, and I'm the psychopath for going food shopping. I go to the grocery store. I just buy food for the week, and then put it in my refrigerator where it can stay cold. I don't want to. I don't want to eat the same thing every day, though. You're probably buying. What are you buying? I buy different food. You can have more than one thing in your fridge, too. I gotta explain refrigerators to you, man. They're neat. There's like a crisper. I don't know what a crisper is. <laughs> I, that's where the beer goes. <laughs> Some real thought-provoking refrigerator and beard talk. You're welcome. You will find this nowhere else except on this podcast, and that's probably not for the best. So that's the ROH portion of the tour. And this kind of doesn't go in order because I did Wednesday, Thursday, Friday for Ring of Honor. I went to Pittsburgh on Saturday. And then on Sunday, we did another show for Ring of Honor. And if you're on the road like me and you're wrestling and commentating and podcasting and everything else, you might not have the energy for other stuff. And that's why our sponsor, BlueChew.com, wants to increase your performance and get you that extra confidence in bed. It's like that uh, game you play with fortune cookies, except I I actually meant it. Blue Chew. It's the talk of the wrestling scene. It's also the first chewable with the same FDA-approved ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, so you know they work. And since they're chewable, they work up to twice as fast as a pill, so you'll always be ready. In bed. Still works. Blue Chew is prescribed online and shipped straight to your door in a discreet package, which means no in-person doctor visit, no waiting in the pharmacy, no awkwardness or anxiety. Blue Chew is made in the U.S. and it ships direct, and that's where they pass on the savings to you. For my listeners, Blue Chew wants to give you your first shipment for free. Just use my promo code COLT and pay the $5 in shipping. That's B-L-U-E-C-H-E-W dot com. Promo code is COLT. Try it for free. Blue Chew, the better, cheaper, faster choice. In bed. Hey, hey. All right, the in-between show was IWC in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I've wrestled there since I was 21 years old, if not 20 years old. And David Arquette, we heard the story before. We heard it on my podcast a couple of weeks ago. Wasn't able to make it. I got the booking. Myself and RJ City did a little tag team wrestling. Also, 
if some of you saw my Twitter, on the drive there, I drove with Jonathan Gresham and Brian Johnson, and I said I was thirsty. And Jonathan Gresham said, hey, if you're thirsty, we just passed an auto zone. And um, that blew my mind a little bit. <laughs> he, he was serious. So they got drinks in there. Auto zone. And this is a guy who's traveled for the past 15 years or 13 years, driving all over the place. Auto zone. Amazing. We got to the show. And guess who was there? David Arquette. At one point, I thought he was blowing off all these independents. And now, I see that is not the case. Uh, on the last podcast, you said you weren't going to be here. I know. I know. I, I can't stay away. <laughs> I really can't. Um, yeah. Well, first of all, thanks for the payday again. Thank you. Thank you for backing me up. You keep on thanking me for me getting paid by promoters. This is wonderful. <laughs> That's awesome. I just love this deal. <laughs> You weren't going to be here because you were going to be on a movie set? I was supposed to be on a movie set. It got pushed till March. So elbows- this is Dreyfus, yeah? Yeah, that was the Dreyfus one. Pushed to March? Yeah. Yeah. It's an independent movie. That kind of stuff happens. Happens all the time. And your elbow. Elbow update. Not, not quite healed, but uh, against doctor's orders. I didn't break anything. I just had the bursa removed, so... They said it was, you know, it looked great. It's healing fine. So, nah. And, right, that was, I don't know, two or three weeks ago. <laughs> and um, uh, you did stuff today. I little stuff. I like doing stuff. <laughs> it's fun to do stuff, especially with you two. You two are amazing together. So it's fun just to come out here. I didn't. I really didn't want to let fans down. So I, uh, I was last night, I was in uh, New York uh, with Northeast Wrestling. God didn't ring with Jerry Lawler and Mick Foley. It was like a dream come true. So then I drove six hours, came here, living the dream, man. You, who'd you drive with? I solo, soloed out. You're in it. I'm in it. <laughs> I did. I was seeing if Hornswoggle was around, but he wasn't to drive with me. <laughs> but I, Just like, hey, I wonder if this little man will drive with me. <laughs> yeah, I saw him and Tommy Dreamer driving. So I was like, that would be awesome. And he didn't. Where is no, he? No. He's not on the show. I'm just kidding. I'm just a big fan. I oh. love that guy. <laughs> you love to Hornswoggle? Of course. Who can I can eat on? I bet he loves you. Does he know this? No, no, I don't think so. I don't know. I will tell him. <laughs> okay, good. Great. Awesome. Thank you again. <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> Thank you. Right. Oh, what a sweetheart. A sweetheart of a man. And I told him how much I loved Airheads, and he loved that. You never know. Some people are like, they told me what my favorite matches are. I'm like, oh, thanks so much. Sometimes they'll tell me other matches that I hate, and I'll be like, oh, all right, sure. But I gave him airheads, and he loved it. I feel he loves anything, though. Just, I, right? You get that sense from him. You know who else I love? I, I think everyone. We're all on the same page with this one. Tommy Dreamer, he was at the show. And I talked to him about uh, being in Pittsburgh and being on the road at his age. We find ourselves here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. In a stairwell in a land far, far away. Yeah, I grabbed you. And you're not even scared. No, man. I I know murderers. (laughs) You do? Yeah, many. ECW. Come on. (laughs) Well, that's true. I don't even want to talk about that. You know murderers. We used to get away with murderers. Chris Benoit killed that for all of us, bro. You want me to put this on there? (laughs) He did. You have the editing rights right now. Uh, you can air that. It's a, I'm not really joking. But I do. I know murderers. I know wrestlers that have murdered. You know them too. Mm. So it's a weird topic to start off. But hey, we're here. You're the innovator of the podcast. You invented this shit. With the innovator of violence. Correct. What's your Pittsburgh memories? The, the egg bowl? The egg dome? What is that thing called? That would be the Golden Dome in <laughs> Manaka, PA. That's what that is. How did you guys fill that place? We were over, brother. Uh, Shane Douglas, he was the local promoter, and uh, we packed that place. And again, ECW was super duper over. I'll tell you a lovely fond memory. Big Dick Dudley, Bubba, Devon versus myself, Sam Man. It was Bubba and Devon were filming television, and right before I go out there, Aaron is like, all right, be safe. All right, be safe. They're pretty much gritting their teeth and saying it weird to me. And uh, I turn to look at my tag team partners, who is a Sam Man with a Spike Dudley run in and a New Jack run in. And they're like, all right, man. All right, man. Again, gritting their teeth. And I was like, what's up? And they all open up their tongues and they had acid on their tongues. That was going into a television taping. <laughs> And uh, needless to say, I had to be the workhorse for that one. But the You're like, guys, we can't do this. You can't do acid and wrestle in extreme <laughs> championship wrestling. And the funny part about that whole thing was 
it got edited, but remember the, uh, I think it was a, is that when they started floating? No, but like the golden dome had a weird ceiling and they all just started looking up and spike was like in next level, like drugged up world. And then they, uh, on the loudspeaker, New Jack got the loud PA and he went here, lizard, 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 here, lizard, lizard. It was a commercial. Uh, it was either Taco Bell or, and he just started saying it over the microphone of an actual television taping. Yes, that was my life in the tw- my 20s. <laughs> and in Pittsburgh. Uh, and then what's your schedule going on this week? Or, you, I mean, okay, so before you told me, and you could say it on here, what you, how many gigs you've done. This year. year it will be it was originally 202 shows now I think it's going to be 205 I'm trying to get one less or one more because I don't want to be 205 I want to get 206 or 204 I say I do about 200 days on the road which is probably you know which, which equivalents to 130 150 shows but 206 shows is like 200 and 70 days on the road, right? Mostly I travel the day of the show, so, but yeah. For the month of October, I had four days off. I just did MLW Chicago. Friday, I did Shelby, North Carolina. Saturday, we're here in Pittsburgh. Tomorrow, I fly to Impact in Vegas, do Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Monday, I'm hosting Busted Open live at 9 a.m. Eastern, which means, however, I have to get up about four in the morning. Yeah. And then I go Vegas to Florida, Florida somewhere for Friday. And then I wind up in New Jersey on that Saturday. Then uh, I'm home for that Sunday. And you're 23 years old? How old are you? Uh, Yeah, I'm a young hotline. I'm 47. (laughs) And still doing this schedule. I love it. And preferring. Yes, I love it. I do this to myself. I honestly, I only feel pain when I fly, um, but... I, I do. I love it. When I'm out there, I really, I love being Tommy Dreamer. I feel I'm still contributing and working at a high level. Weirdly, lately, I'm the one, like, guys, like, I'm wrestling, like, oh, man, my shoulders hurt, like, or, like, yeah, no, uh, I got this, I got that. I'm like, oh, don't worry, I'll take care of you. And, like, I'm the one taking all the bumps and doing everything when it's, like, the business is supposed to, like, you're supposed to take care of the old guy. But that's why I'm a hot young lion on the baby seat face scene. I aspire to be like you, my friend. You are like me. Come on, you're the innovator of the podcast. You work all the time. I just watched your work. Acai Moonsault from the second rope on shitty ropes. You work your ass off. When, I, when I'm 47, I want like I worry that I'm not going to have the same schedule or the schedule that you're doing. And looking at you and knowing that you do it and seeing how great a shape you're in and how youthful and spry you look, there's hope for me. Uh, that I wear. I'm. I uh, have a lot of beard tanner. I have a lot of fake hair. Topics. I have a lot of fake tanner, and I wear a woman's medium shirt, which packs it all in. These are great. This is great advice or, or tricks. Yeah, and tricks I'll of write the trade. Them all tricks of the trade. You have, you know, some. I remember when you were fatter, you had the belly K Faber. Still have it. Yeah, that's what we got to do to look youthful. We can't all look like Hulk Hogan now, brother. You look better than the whole roster. Way to shit on everybody on your first <laughs> day back, brother. Good for Tommy Dreamer, getting some quick shots in there on Chris Benoit and Hulk Hogan. Ugh, wrestling. I'm trying to do my part to make it a better place. So is Tommy Dreamer. It it might just be us two. And we will both move on to the next week for more shows and more madness. Uh, Before I get out of here, though, I do have some plugs and... Upcoming events! All right, the best way you can support, coltmerch.com, digitalcult.com, Twitter and Instagram, at Colt Cabana, Facebook slash Colt Cabana. My storytelling podcast, Pro Wrestling Fringe, plus past archives of this show, old and new, ad-free on stitcherpremium.com slash Colt. Use the code Colt, get a free month. ColtWrestling at gmail.com is my very public email. Maybe a promoter will put me on your upcoming show or convention or even be documented on this very podcast. I also have a YouTube channel. I also have a website, ColtCabana.com. That's where you can find my P.O. box. Upcoming right now in the middle of this tour, Thursday, November 15th, Cleveland, Ohio, ClevelandComedyFestival.com. And Wednesday, November 21st, Chicago, Illinois, live at NorthBar.com. Those are the shows left that Marty and I are doing comedy for. Marty and I are also doing two experimental wrestling things. Filming them for future purposes. If you want to come, Saturday, November 17th, we're in Crossville, Illinois. Facebook slash SNPWLLC. 
And Sunday, November 18th, Jefferson, Indiana at The Arena. Saturday, November 24th, Chicago, Illinois, AAWrestling.com. Friday, November 30th, Oswegan, Ontario, Facebook slash SKM Six Nations. Saturday, December 1st, Brantford, Ontario, Facebook slash Magnificent Championship. Sunday, December 2nd, Hamilton, Ontario, Alpha-1Wrestling.com. December 14th and 15th, New York City and Philadelphia. I will be doing commentary, ROHWrestling.com. Sunday, December 16th, San Juan, Puerto Rico, Facebook slash CW. WAPR, Saturday, December 29th, Marionette Park, Illinois, AAWrestling.com. Intro music by the Ukulele Teacher on YouTube. Outro music by Super Fun Yeah Yeah Rocket Ship. Podcast cover art and design by Jimmy Lee. Photo by James Musselwhite. Thanks to Tommy Dreamer, Todd Sinclair, Mark Briscoe, Trent, Chuck Taylor, and David Arquette. Also, thanks to our sponsors, HighSpots.com, a VOD service that is wonderful. PWG's $5 Wrestlings, AMA knee pads, gear, masks, even a wrestling ring. OneHourTees.com, they help run ProWrestlingTees.com. That's where you can support your favorite independent wrestler. Like me, traveling on the road. I'll see you next week. This has been the Art of Wrestling. For Colt Cabana, I'm Colt Cabana. Thanks. Hey, Art of Wrestling fans, it's Sam Roberts, known in some circles as the last professional broadcaster. And now that you're done with the Art of Wrestling, can I encourage you to check out my podcast, Not Sam Wrestling, available each and every week where I sit down and talk to some of the biggest names in the world of wrestling. Names like Shinsuke Nakamura, Samoa Joe, Seth Rollins, Carmella, Becky Lynch, legends like Stone Cold Steve Austin and Shawn Michaels, promoters like Court Bauer, stars from around the world like Cody Rhodes, Joey Janela, even Colt Cabana. Plus, we break down the world of wrestling every week with a segment that we call The State of Wrestling. Check it out on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, YouTube, NotSam.com, wherever podcasts are available each and every Thursday morning. And let me know what you think. Try it. You just might like it. Thanks, Colt.